The Panhandle Charitable Open, or the PCO, has grown into a major player in philanthropy in our area, raising thousands of dollars for local charities. Because of the amazing success of the PCO, for 2014, changes have been made to the format of the tournament and a new way for non-golfers to participate has been added. Here to tell us about the 13th annual Panhandle Charitable Open is John Peacock, president of the Panhandle Charitable Open. John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Well, before we get to, into talking about this, I want to thank you very much for all your service on our board of directors and then just all you do for the community and um, you just are always out there and always doing good stuff. We well, thank you. It's my that. pleasure. Well, Pensacola's appreciate... been great to me, and it's just our way of giving back. So. Well, you do a great job, and that kind of gets us into what we're going to talk about, giving back. Um, before we get into the details and all the new exciting things, tell us a little bit about the history of the tournament and how it um, how it evolved into the PCO. Sure, thanks. I started, well, this will be the 13th year. Uh, for the first couple of years, I wasn't involved, and it was really the Marcus Point men's group, just a bunch of guys trying to raise a little bit of money, and they raised a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there. I think in the first five years, they raised uh, nine or $10,000. Um, and then one day, um, uh, you know, I lost the son about, it'll be 14 years ago this October. And one day, about uh, seven or eight years ago, I was walking with one of the guys that started that tournament. And I said, I wanted to, I lived at Marcus Point at the time. I want to get some people together around that time of year to kind of um, just remember that weekend and just kind of get family together, remember the importance of family and uh, try and do something good with that. So I said, what if we kind of combine forces and, uh, and if I'm going to do this, I'm going to kind of kick it up a notch, if you will. And we're going to make it a real 501c3. And that's where the Panhandle Charitable Open was formed on that day on, a, on the ninth green, or ninth <laughs> fairway, actually. And uh, from there, the first year, we raised about $20,000. And in the past seven years, we raised over $400,000, with last year being $95,000, a record year. Um, we gave money to 19 different charities. Uh, so it's just been an amazing ride to watch the tournament grow and uh, get more people on board. And it's just been an amazing success. Well, you're great at creating partnerships, and then that actually, you know, is great proof of that. And the Council on Aging, we just appreciate so much being included in that uh, list of uh, recipients. So why do you think it's become so successful? What do you attribute the success to? Yeah, I think it's because it's a collaborative effort. You know, I think there's three main charities that we try to target. Uh, it started out as one, and we've grown that to three. Um, it's uh, Council on Aging, of course, Gulf Coast Kids House, and uh, Guardian at Lightham. Uh, they get the majority of the money, about 60%. And then through other sponsorships, people say, well, you know, if there's additional dollars left, could you help a certain charity? And sure. we've just grown. So people recognize the bigger the pot gets, the more money is there for other charities. Right now, we're up to, like I said, 19 different charities with that $95,000. So it's uh, hope this year we'll bust the $100,000 mark and continue to grow. And this event could get even bigger. Um, it could grow to a whole week, week's worth of events, which is uh, why I'm, uh, the hair is turning loose instead of turning gray <laughs> or some of both. So. Okay, well, let's talk about some of that potential growth, but let's talk about golf first. Uh, you know, I know there are some format changes. Mm -hmm to accommodate more players. Tell us a little bit right. about that. Well, the format's always been unique. It's a two-day, two-person best ball. What that means is normally most charity events are scrambles. Four people hit a, hit a ball, and then you go pick the best ball, et cetera. Most golfers or people who like to play golf don't really like that. You tend to do things in that kind of format that you wouldn't normally do. This is an event where if you and I were partners, we hit our own ball, play our own ball, and at the end of the hole, we put down the best score. So everybody gets to kind of play real golf. It's almost like a real tournament. And you're matched up with another two, some a different team. So there's a little bit of uh, more integrity there than, and maybe in a foursome, a little less aptitude to give away that putt. And then the next day, after the first day, we flight you based on how you did the first day. So there's four competitive divisions at the end of the first day, and everybody's got a chance to win their division. So it's really been kind of unique that way. We had so much success, and if all the sponsors ever used their teams, we'd have a ton of golfers. So this year, we're adding the possibility for people to have to play Friday morning and Saturday afternoon instead of just Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. That's done it uh, allow more golfers to play, sure. but also to make sure that the Friday afternoon, Saturday morning doesn't turn into a five and a half, six hour round, which can be kind of brutal if the weather's bad. Sure, accommodate so schedules and make, have a little bit more fun as well. Right, so that's the golf part. And there's a couple other changes too I think we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna be showing some information up on the screen, how they can find out. Uh, but just tell us real quick, if somebody did want to play or you mentioned sponsors, how does someone figure out how they can get involved? A couple different ways. Go to our website, which is www.pco.com 
golf.org, PCO, Panhandle Charitable Open, golf.org, or certainly give me a call at 712-7466, and I'll certainly hook you up. And I'm sure you'll be getting some calls. Well, uh, the other new part, uh, it's a big party on Thursday night. This is a new addition. I believe Friday night was um, an event, but yeah. now bigger and better on Thursday. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, at the please. golf course, we always have had a live and silent auction all day long on Friday, and then uh, Mass Confusion is a great local band. They've always come out and played for us, and we've had dinner and stuff. What we realize is that's great if you just do that one afternoon and, and Saturday morning, but if we had morning and afternoon, that's going to kind of inhibit that, that party time. And we also recognize that at the end of the uh, golf event, some golfers are pretty tired. They're not necessarily willing to go bet on, bid on things, and some of them just want to go home. So we so said, what if we, and a lot of people say, oh, we want to support the event, but we're just not golfers, right? So what if we moved that event to a Thursday night and we called it the four, F O R E, charity? Tea off party. That's about as creative as I get, right? <laughs> so we moved it to a Thursday night, hoping that people that are not golfers can still come out and contribute to a great cause, buy a table, participate in a salon or live auction, and just have a heck of a good time. And um, Four Seasons, the local catering company, is going to cater some great food. Saw the menu yesterday. It's going to be fantastic. And Bass Confusion is still going to play for us. So it's going to be a great band, great opportunity. Come out and have a good time and support a great cause. Now, where is it going to be held? At Sanders Beach. Okay, so at Sanders Beach is a great facility. It's a great, beautiful city-owned facility. And, and it's great that, you know, you, you've adjusted and listened to the feedback of I want to help, but I don't play golf. Right, so this right. gives everybody a way, and I know we plan on on all being there. Yeah, is, is, the auction has well. always done a great job of raising some money. We think now it can do two or three times that or maybe even more. And, again, all that money goes back to back to the charities we support. Now, how can people get tickets to the event? I know a lot of seats are tied to sponsorships, and it's kind of a puzzle, but if someone did want to find out more about the event, what would what would you suggest? Same website, pcogolf.org, or give me a call at 712-7466. Okay. Um, well, before we wrap up, I mean, Tell us a little bit about your philosophy of what this does for the community, because you mentioned how many charities and, and how much money over the course. I mean, that's that's major impact. It, it has, and every year as you get closer to the event, you know how it is putting on charity events, the Rat Pack, et cetera. It's just, you get so tired. So I don't know if I can do this again. And then you see the impact of what you did and how much charities support that. You know, I've often said that small businesses are known as the backbone of the economy, but I truly believe that nonprofits such as Council on Aging and all the other uh, nonprofits we support are the heart and soul of our community, and we just owe it to our community to continue to support those folks. Because without the efforts that you guys do, that would all fall on the on the um, lap of government, and we don't have enough resources to do that. So what you guys do day in day out is just amazing, and we we owe it to you and our community to support that. And when we see the impact of an event like this and what it does, it's it's easy to keep going. Well, over the course of the year, it all adds over the years, it all adds up, and y'all have just been a huge supporter to to all of us. So thank you very much. Oh, uh, thank you.